Today's episode is brought to you by Hawthorne. Hawthorne is going to get you smelling good, and we have new scents just in time for the summer. Oh my goodness. We'll talk about Hawthorne later. Now let's jump into this podcast. Hello, everybody. It's time for Ghost and Friend Dog. Friend Dog in the morning. In the morning. Live, 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 live. Four hour recording studio. Recording. Wake your ass up, Mr. Friend Dog in the morning. Hello, everybody. Welcome to an exciting episode of Cats and Crendor in the morning. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it felt like we were two goblins. And I was like that one goblin who was like, Give us all your loot, human! And you were like, yeah! <laughs> yeah! <laughs> Put it in the bag! Give us all the loot, human! We're gonna use it and make some noise or something out of it! Yeah, we're gonna use it! We're gonna use it! Exactly. <laughs> we're, we're, those, we're, we're those goblins. Yeah. No, it's, uh, it's, I've, all, I've always seen myself more as a goblin. Uh, right, of course. <laughs> I always thought I was more of a hobgoblin. Yeah. No, I can see that. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I've always said that about myself. <laughs> yeah, no, I can see that. Uh, oh yeah, I watched your uh, your ten year special. Thank you for watching my ten year special. It was yeah. not actually what I wanted to do. I I spent I got up at six a.m. Right. Started working on a thing that was like a video tribute to like some of the best moments. Right. Right. Clicked render. Went to go upload. YouTube was like something's wrong with this. I'm like what? So I go back. Look at the files. Everything checks out. Re-render it. Go to upload. YouTube's like, something's wrong with this. I'm like, what? <laughs> go back. Now it is eh, maybe noon, noon 30. And I'm like, I've spent six hours on this. I'm like, okay. Go back. Try it again. This time I discover that there's something wrong with the actual rendered file. Uh. I, I couldn't figure out what the rendering process was doing. But it was one of the video clips was clearly screwing it up. But when I went back into Adobe, everything played fine. <laughs> so I couldn't figure it out. I gave up and just made a video. And I made a vlog instead. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> F it. I'm done. I can't be asked. So I just made a vlog instead. That was my, here's to 10 years. <laughs> the most YouTube problems a person can have. I, I was like, oh, my God. Are you kidding me? Yeah. So... <laughs> No, that's that seems what I pretty fitting for a 10-year special. Yeah, it certainly was. Oh, my God. And then everyone was like, Jesse, are you okay? I'm like, well, <laughs> besides not knowing how to use a camera properly, I'm fine. That's your secret. You've never been okay. Yeah, I know. I uh, I bought a new camera for streaming and for uh, like doing vlogs and stuff. Yeah. It's a very nice camera. It looks great. I'm very impressed. But I guess the way my, like, the lighting in this room is, I need to buy ring lights or something. Uh, because yeah. when I turned on the camera, the contrast was so out of whack that <laughs> when I messed with it, I finally got it looking like I looked like a normal human being, except it made all the darker tones darker. So, like, it looks like I suddenly have infinite numbers of, fr like, freckles in this video, and my, <laughs> I have, like, dark bags under my eyes, and, like, my beard is, like, a darker red, and I was like, I what do you want from me? What do you want from me? Is that the one so you used like, in the 10-year thing? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, I noticed, because I was like, this guy's got some bags. These have been worn down over the years. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, uh, yeah, it is, all it did is, like, made everything darker, and so... I, I'm f I'm fine with everyone's concern. It makes me feel good that people care. But like, also, it's there's nothing to worry about. I was just like, I can't figure out how to make this camera work. So, I'm gonna take some time and and learn the the you know all the mechanics of it. So, because the minute I switch to my normal webcam, I look fine again, relatively fine, right. you know, <laughs> for being me. Uh, but I look fine, and so I have to figure it out, or I have to move my desk. Because right now I'm sitting under a light, so all <laughs> light shines down on me like I'm in a spotlight. But it looks terrible on camera because I have shadows everywhere, and I look like I'm like plotting revenge on a hero. <laughs> hey guys, I've been doing YouTube ten years. How do I make camera work? See, that's the thing, though. <laughs> how do I make camera work? <laughs> I ask I'm, myself I'm every genuinely day. asking. How do I make camera work? 
Yeah, there's like some random ass problems you run into when you like do this thing. Like, I use my shitty green screen application so that I don't have to use a real green screen, as one does. So, uh, I was using it, and then it started breaking everything. So I was like trying to stream, and it would be like chopping up the the stream footage, so it looked like it was dropping frames. And then I tried to make a video, <laughs> and then it ruined the video because it did the same thing. So I had to uninstall that. Now it works, but I got to reinstall it because I need my shitty green screen. Yeah, I um, I've been looking into what is it called? I'm gonna find this for you right now. All right. Uh, I guess like a a good place to look at is if you want to see what I'm talking about is ledchromakey.com and they have all the different stuff there they have all the different but they have retro reflective backgrounds and you'll see they're not green screened at all they are uh sort of grayish and these things are supposed to be like top of the line the problem is you can see <laughs> that it's like 396 bucks mama mia yeah wait what's it called l e e L E D chroma key. Oh, L E D. Uh, you can see they have all the different. There's also uh, special lighting. You oh, can stick on cameras shit. that makes it like light. You know, this is the color we want to use. That kind of thing. It's fascinating because yeah, what it does, crazy. you can see that like the the uh, image or the, the the canvas is gray, but if you look at what's being recorded, it's green. Because the light coming off of the ring around the lighting is green. Damn, that's like some next level sh shiitake mushrooms. Yeah, so you can change that light to make it whatever color, so you can chroma key in whatever color you need, and the background still stay stays that gray. Huh. So it's supposed to be it's supposed to be the the next level thing. I don't think anyone really needs it, but I keep thinking like. What if I just got that instead? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But that's uh for the future. That's you know I keep looking at like hmm, maybe one day. <laughs> yeah. The thing is, I don't care about the quality. Right? <laughs> I'm aware. I know. <laughs> <laughs> so if I just get some shitty green screen thing off Amazon for like forty bucks, I mean that's phew, probably good enough right there. I still have that mysterious green screen that showed up at my house. I've never Ooh. once used it. Maybe I should. Wait, I feel like I remember that, but I don't remember it. I got a green screen in a box. A giant green screen was sent to me in a box. It's too big for the room I'm in right now. <laughs> a giant green screen was sent to me. And the address on it was from this girl, Alex, who used to work at Blizzard. And it said it was sent from Blizzard and this girl, Alex, to me. But Alex, when I got it, had not worked at Blizzard for... I'm going to say five months. <laughs> oh. <laughs> and I was like, uh, Alex, did you send this to me? She's like, I did not. And I was like, uh, why does it say you did? And why does it say it's from Blizzard? And she's like, I have no idea. I've never heard of anyone sending anyone a green screen before. That's weird. And I was like, uh, uh. so I just have it. I talked to, I talked to, you know, lore and everyone I know at Blizzard and was like, should I be sending this to you guys? Is this one of the things you ordered? And it just got sent to me weirdly. And they got back to me like, none of us know what that is. <laughs> and so I'm like, ah. <laughs> so I have a mysterious free green screen in my living room, just like ready to go. Should I ever want to stream with a green screen? But huh. yeah, it's weird. I don't know. That is really weird. Maybe. Oh, my God. You know who sent it, don't you? I, I do not know. Who do we know that's green? Where is this going? <laughs> <laughs> Think about it. Who do we know that's green? I know. I don't. I mean, personally, I don't, who do we know Possibly that's green? Personally. Yes. What is, what is this question? <laughs> I don't know the right answer to this. Obviously, who do we know that's green? The green cheetah. Cheetah. <laughs> of course. She wanted to it's remind me. She's still out there. She can get she close to my friends. Masqueraded. <laughs> masqueraded as a Blizzard employee that you knew. <laughs> oh, my God. thing is coded in green sheet of magic. Well, it all checks out now. Do not open that box. Oh, I already did, and I have it stored away. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> that is not good. <laughs> She's um. been in my house for months. <laughs> uh... Oh, yeah, that's what I was going to bring up. Uh, you brought up in the video, Ormsby Cinema Insane. Yes. 
I did. All right. Now, here's the thing. You brought it up as if, like, it was a bad thing. But I don't think we ever made fun of Ormsby. Uh, we, I vividly remember us talking about, like, how terrible it was. Like, it, oh, it's, like, so poor. Like, it's so dumb. And I, I vividly remember that. Now, if we didn't do that, uh -oh. I feel bad. Like, I, I, you know, I still feel bad. But it's, here's the thing. It's not, like, it's weird. Like, it's very weird. <laughs> if you watch it, it's very weird. I'm not going to say it's not weird. But I That's felt like... It's what, weird, but it's amazing. Yeah, I felt like what... Maybe you didn't, but I felt like what I said at the time felt like I was I was treating it like, you know, it was it was garbage. And I don't think it's garbage. Oh, yeah. I like, you know, I think it's hilarious. Um, But yeah, I, I don't know. I just felt bad. I've always felt bad about that. I just wanted to get it off of my chest. It may not be a true thing. Maybe I just like <laughs> after ten years made it up that I felt bad about it, but I did, and I wanted to. G I wanted to say, don't talk shit on other people's stuff. That's all I wanted to say. I wanted to put it out there. Yeah, I mean, I thought Armsby was great. <laughs> I loved Armsby. <laughs> I feel like you would. That is yeah. prime Crendor material. <laughs> yeah, no, I I loved it. In fact, I think we brought it up on the podcast, and then you brought it up on co-optional because you bought the mug. I did buy the mug, and I. I still have that mug to this day. I drink from it every other day. <laughs> Can't do every day. Yeah, well, I, I know. Too much. I, I have to do the let it sit in the sink for at least one day before I wash it. <laughs> Wait, why? Because that just happens. I don't know why. I don't know why. I like, I like get coffee, <laughs> drink it, go upstairs, like you know, use water on the coffee cup, and then put it in the sink for some reason. And then the next day, I'll wake up and be like. You know, I love this coffee cup, I'll, and I'll clean it, and then I'll use it for coffee. I don't know why. I can't tell you why. It's just what I do. I have I have maybe 20 coffee cups, and most of them, I think, are too small. <laughs> most of them are, oh. like, small. I want a big cup of coffee in the morning. Okay. And the Ornsby coffee cup is big enough, I think. The uh, Hearthstone coffee cup that I got from Blizzard, that one works. That's like a big cup of coffee. It's not like oh, yeah. it's not like significantly bigger. It's just most of the coffee mugs you get are like, you know, you got to go back for Little seconds. Like... And once I start working, I'm like, no, nah, man, I'm going to keep drinking, and I don't need to go back for more. Are you looking for like those little espresso cups where they're like... <laughs> yeah, no, you know? thank you. I even have some of those. It's uh, my Eeyore one is like that. Is it like an espresso cup for children? It's not for children. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's a very nice mug. Okay. It's like a... But it is, it's more like in between a coffee cup and an espresso cup. It's like a, I'll drink it at night if I want like a little bit of coffee, but not like a lot of coffee, you know? It like limits it. Sure. I get it. And that's... Uh, but normally when I drink my coffee, here's what I wanted to bring up. Okay. I have these like mugs that I've drank out of for like, I think 12 years at this point. Sure. And they're like these, they're like very sturdy brown mugs that have like acorns on them. All right. Cause my mom bought them out of like some catalog like 12 years ago. And then when I moved out, she was like, you can take a mug cause you drink it a lot. And I was like, okay. And then I loved it so much that I bought two more of them. I'd like find it in like some crazy, like <laughs> old, uh, part of the internet it was like <laughs> you went to geocities they, that... <laughs> <laughs> I went to Geo City. it was like it wasn't the people that made them it was like someone that refurbished them and was reselling them oh so what i have is like a wonky like whitish brown color and the oh. other one's like oh. uh the other one's more normal but i was like screw it i mean they're the same mug so i got them and they're great and i feel like they make the coffee taste better here's the thing a good mug can it can it can change your day can change yes. your day. I uh, unfor I, I have some mugs that I keep just – like I have one from a speech and debate tournament when I was like in 12th grade. I still have that. <laughs> I have one that is – my dad and I had a Big Dipper, Little Dipper mug set. Little Dipper, don't know what happened to it. I think it got destroyed. But I still have the Big Dipper <laughs> one, and I keep that. And then I have a bunch of like – I have way too many uh, tabletop – Mugs from when I was on tabletop. I probably should get rid of like too many of them. <laughs> and then I have uh, like you know mugs that people keep giving me, which is fine. I'm you know I'm always down for a good mug, but I'm starting to get to the point where I feel like I have too many mugs. Even though it's oh, like yeah. one shelf on a closet, I'm like that's still 
what am I going to need 20 mugs? So I keep thinking about getting rid of some on my next move. Yeah, I have a lot of mugs, and it's those things where I drink out of, like, I have my coffee mugs, then I have my Eeyore coffee mug, then I have my Studio Ghibli mugs, which are, like, handcrafted mugs with, like, Studio Ghibli things on them that we got at, like, a Comic-Con and a Ren Fair. And they're all, so one's got, like, Totoro on it, one has uh, the Cat Bus on it, one has, uh, like, Gigi on it uh, from Kiki's Delivery Service. Of course. And they're great. I love those mugs. And... I don't really drink out of any other mugs, but I like those other mugs. Sometimes they're like the backup mugs. You need a backup quarterback. You reach back there. You pull out like, you know, Tigger with like he's hopping around. <laughs> Get in there, Tigger. The team needs you. <laughs> he puts his helmet on like, got it. The uh, wonderful thing about he does, Tiggers. He does, a, <laughs> he does a solid job. He does what he's asked. He holds the liquid, keeps it hot or cold. I've been ruined. My mom um, for... Christmas or something a few years back got me one of those giant ass tumbler cups that keeps hot things hot and cold things cold not just for like 20 minutes not just for like an hour like almost all day <laughs> it's uh, I can put in nice cold water in the morning and four hours later it's still cold and I'm like oh yes it's great <laughs> hot things I can put like a hot coffee in there I only have one of these. I wash it and use it every single day. Every One day, the metal is probably going to like... Can aluminum chip? Because I don't know what's going to happen. I watch this thing constantly. I drink out of this. I'm drinking out of it right now. I love it. I don't know if aluminum can chip. Aluminium. It's pronounced aluminium. aluminium. I know there's people already saying that. Stupid Americans with that aluminium. That's my... Uh... That's my, like, crazy scientist British man. Right. No, I, yeah, you could tell because it sounded like he had glasses <laughs> pinching his nose. Yes, exactly. No, but I'm bad again. <laughs> <laughs> and then, um, I was going to say, with your big mug, all right, here's the problem. I like to make coffee, and I get, like, a the right amount of coffee, and if you pour more than that, it's going to cool down eventually, or you're going to lose some of that flavor because it's, like, I don't know, it gets cooler and the, the taste changes. Sure, but I will drink it all relatively quick. That's that's too fast. This can give you a heartburn. Oh, not me. I love like I won't <laughs> down it. I'm not gonna like oh yeah, but I will you know <laughs> over the course of like thirty minutes drink a cup of coffee. All right. Okay. Yeah. It sounded like you were just you're straight up guzzling it down. No. Oh hell no. That's not how you drink coffee. Please. All what right. kind of caffeine good. addict would you be if you guzzled <laughs> coffee? A fool. All right, good. Just checking, just making sure we're on the same page here. Yeah, no, I've been, uh, I've been digging. Like, I found this place nearby that makes fresh bagels. Oh, so during quarantine, no one's allowed in, but they can bring the bagels out to you. And I'm like, all right, cool. Yeah. So I pull on up, and I'm Turn like, side. I'll go every few days and get like, you know, three or four bagels and I have them for a while. And then go back a few more days later. So I don't have to, you know, you go to the grocery store and you get like yeah. a six pack of bagels or whatever. And I'm like, that's too many bagels. Uh, that's too yeah. many. But I can go there and get like three bagels and come back a few days later. Be like, three of your freshest bagels, please. And they're great. <laughs> I got two blueberries upstairs with my name on it. I'm like, oh, yeah. That's my, I'm going to get one of those for breakfast tomorrow. Oh, my God. <laughs> Do you get the normal cream cheese or you get the flavored cream cheese? I am a huge blueberry cream cheese guy. The problem is I don't have any. What I do have right now uh, is a cinnamon butter concoction. Oh. I know. So I'm going to use up the rest of that before I go in on something uh, more fruity flavored. See, I like I like standard cream cheese, but I also like I like that like cinnamon cinnamony type of cream like cheese. cinnamon sugar kind of deal that's like yeah. a little cinnamon toast crunchy yeah that stuff's great yeah and then let's see oh wait we've got the 50 most popular cream cheeses <laughs> i bet the first one is like something that i would hate original philadelphia cream cheese yep <laughs> <laughs> out of all the cream uh, cheeses you can get there's so many amazing cream cheeses you can buy Philadelphia cream cheese is like the most basic cream cheese. How is that number one? <laughs> well, number two is creamy, spicy, pepper jack, spreadable cheese from the Laughing Cow. Great attempt. I hate spicy cream cheese. I don't think I've had spicy cream cheese. Any, any, I'm not like a huge cream cheese fan as is. I don't like layer cream cheese on my bagel. Oh, I do. Uh, I'm not, yeah, I'm not like huge into it. I will, <laughs> I'll have a thin layer and I'll be fine. 
It's probably why I lost my gallbladder. <laughs> <laughs> but then, number three is the whipped original. But here's the thing. What's like... So when they whip it, right? Like, what makes it fluffier? I actually know this because I... Uh, recently, when I went to go get cream cheese, they didn't have the one I wanted. So I got... Because I usually get blueberry, but they had a whipped berry instead. And I was like, oh, okay, that seems fine. Um... As far as I can tell, the whipped version. So, like, there's cream. Everyone knows what cream cheese looks like, right? The, the like, consistency yeah. of it. The whipped version is a lighter, airier version of it. But what I discovered is if that you, because uh, I guess I did it wrong. I guess you're supposed to just scoop it out and put it on your bagel. Mm -hmm. What I did, I was like, oh, well, if I stir up the whipped cream cheese, then I then it can, like, you know, then I'll get, you know, the bits of the cherries or whatever. I don't know what fruit was in it. But, like, so I went and I started stirring it. And what I realized is as I stirred it, the fluffiness went away. And it literally just became, like, <laughs> normal cream cheese. <laughs> I was like, did I ruin this? Oh. So. Hey, I guess you did. I guess I did. And so then I had that for a while. And it was kind of disappointing. And I was like, ah, I'd rather have the original cream cheese than. Speaking of disappointing, number seven on the list. Okay, this is the first non-normal cream cheese that isn't spicy pepper jack the one-third less fat garden vegetable cream cheese hard pass hard that sounds awful pass you're getting rid of the flavor you're getting rid of that, some of the fat then you're throwing in garden vegetables i don't want garden vegetables <laughs> in my cream cheese i know a <laughs> lot of people who love getting like a plain bagel and doing you know like a garden vegetable cream cheese i would rather have a plain bagel, lettuce, tomato, uh, and bacon. Give me a BLT on a, on a plain bagel any day. That'd be great. That'd be great. A BLT bagel? Yes. Are you kidding me? That'd be amazing. Why don't you just put it on normal bread? Because bagels are great. There's a pizza place near me that makes pizza with bagel dough. Okay. Well, that's like bagel bites. Except but not. It's, <laughs> if you can get it with any type of bagel dough, even garlic, which I think is delicious. When pizza's on a bagel, you can eat pizza anytime. That's true, unless they're closed. <laughs> yeah, but then you get bagel bites. Well, I feel like it's a little better than bagel bites. <laughs> Here's the thing. Bagel bites aren't that bad, as long as you put them in the oven. Bagel bites aren't bad. Here's the thing. Bagel bites aren't bad. Uh, Totinos aren't bad. Uh, uh, Hot Pockets aren't bad. They're terrible for you. But they're not bad. If you cook them the way you're supposed to cook them, they're fine. They're fine eats. But, like, they're not say, great for you. Well, I would say bagel bites are probably the top of that tier. All right? Then I think Totino's pizza rolls, not a fan. That crust is too crusty. While the bagels, they could either be soggy or, like, fresh. But you put those in the oven, those are like some pretty solid little mini bagel pizza snacks. I discovered this is totally unrelated. I discovered my new favorite <laughs> microwavable anything. Because I was thinking about microwaving pizza rolls. Whatever. It doesn't matter. Right. My favorite microwavable thing I discovered recently is there is a... Um, this is the most bougie thing I'll ever say ever. But <laughs> there's an Amy's microwavable white cheddar mac and cheese with kale. <laughs> Here's the thing. It's actually very okay. good. It's very, yeah, very good. The kale. It's delicious. The thing is... Kale and mac and cheese? I'm telling you, you'd think it'd be awful. It is so good. I can't explain to you. They have that and then they have a chili mac and cheese. They're both that delicious. Sounds good. They're both so good. Like they're mac and cheese. I can't explain it to you. Yeah, it's a it's Amy's three cheese and kale bake bowl is the name of it. Okay. I'm telling you. If you're if you if you can like fork over the uh, money for a gluten-free, non-GMO, organic meal. <laughs> it's like <laughs> it's actually really very good. I can't huh. even. I I know it sounds like it shouldn't be. Kale tastes like butt all the time, <laughs> but like yo, it is delicious. Well, I disagree. I've had some good kale, but usually you gotta like saute it and you like put some like garlic in it. Yes, most people just serve kind of, like, you raw kale, garlic. and raw kale is. Awful. That Awful. shit actually shreds your digestive system. Yeah. Raw kale is bad. But I'm pretty sure I've heard that. If you cook it in like good ways, and you know, it's just like when people discovered Brussels sprouts can be good. 
Yeah. For years, everyone's like, Brussels sprouts suck. And then people are like, how are you cooking them? Now people are like, oh my God, they're so good. Every, every restaurant you go out to in the city, there's some form of, of candied bacon, Brussels sprout something. And you're like, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, look at that. Eating raw kale is actually bad for you. These superfood stems could be doing damage to your metabolism. Damn. Yeah, it says... But, like, good uh, damage or bad damage? Like, permanently speed it up or, like, actually hurt it? Uh, I don't know. Let's see. According to Oregon State University's Linus Pauling Institute, these vegetables contain both progoitrin... A compound that can interfere with your thyroid hormone synthesis and thykinine uh, ions. So definitely bad. <laughs> definitely bad. Which I was hoping it'd be like, <laughs> yeah, your your metabolism will skyrocket. And I was like, nice. Time to eat. After a bunch eating of an extremely large amount of raw kale, you could experience hormonal irregularities that lead to fluctuations in blood sugar, weight, and metabolic health. <laughs> no thanks. I'm good. <laughs> That's the last thing I Mama need. Mamma mia. <laughs> then they've got nine foods you should never eat raw. All right, tell me. Uh, nine foods you never should eat raw. Some things you just have to cook. Okay, number nine is chicken. No shit. <laughs> <laughs> Don't eat raw chicken. Thanks. Uh, this is a great article <laughs> so far. Uh, chaya, 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 chia seeds. C h a y a chaya. Chaya is a superfood. C h a y a. Yeah, apparently it's a superfood found in the Yucatan that was a favorite of the Mayans. Interesting. It's similar to spinach, only much stronger tasting, and only very small quantities can be eaten raw because they contain cyanide. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Oh, interesting. Yeah, it. Uh, the leaves and shoots were taken as a laxative, diuretic, circulation stimulant, and to improve digestion. Also, <laughs> to stimulate lactation and harden the fingernails. Damn, that is a superfood. Yeah. But also, but, eat raw. but also, could kill you, apparently. <laughs> so don't eat it raw. Man. Uh, then there's yuca. Just like chaya, yuca or cassava root also contains cyanide. Uh, uh, high levels like of the, toxin in the leaves. Like the, how is it spelled in that case? Is it Y-U-C-A? Y-U-C-C-A, yuca. So the, the, like the potato. Yeah, it's a uh, not potato. Cougar. Yeah, yeah, okay. Must be dried, soaked in water, rinsed, and cooked right after harvest. Yeah, people are like, is it better for you than, pota than potatoes? And they're like, Potatoes. well, I mean, it's higher in protein, but also higher in carbs, so. <laughs> High levels of toxins are found in its leaves, which prevents it from being eaten by insects and animals. Interesting. Shit, dude. Uh, then you got eggs. Yeah, don't eat. Well, sure. I mean, Rocky could, Let's but you're no Rocky. Dude, it says, sure, Rocky might down raw eggs on a daily basis, <laughs> but that doesn't mean it's smart. They're low with protein. Raw eggs also have possibility of containing salmonella, which infects one out of every 30,000 eggs. I mean, that's not that bad. <laughs> <laughs> I risk it for the like, game. You can eat a raw egg a day for years and be fine. It definitely is exactly right? what that means. Yeah, no, I, I definitely think luck, you shouldn't worry, but also raw, raw eggs are gross, so whatever. Yeah, I'd rather just like just cook it like uh like the sunny side up, right? Yeah, same damn thing. Yeah, and then you just crack the yolk. There you go. Have have a party. Uh, pit seeds of apples, mangoes, peaches, pears, apricots. Oh yeah, they got like cyanide too. There's a lot of shit that's got cyanide in, <laughs> in nature. It's almost like nature's <laughs> trying to kill us. <laughs> nah, nature's great. <laughs> damn uh, nature. <laughs> green potatoes. Green potatoes. Green potatoes. What is you know green how sometimes potato? older potatoes... Well, it says potatoes can begin to turn a funky shade of green over time. You don't want to eat that part. When potatoes get too much sunlight, a chemical called solanine can build up the toxic levels. That's what the green is. Mm. If consumed, it can lead to headache, fatigue, nausea, and stomach issues. Interesting. Ew. Well, I, I, I'm curious because when I was in Peru, uh, we ate... I'm going to say... A dozen, maybe two dozen different styles of potato. Yo, there is a hierarchy of potato. I'm going to put it out there right now. Idaho, you're not, you have a baked potato, but that's about it. In Peru, oh my Lord, there were so many good potatoes. There was one, 
It literally looked like like a brown turd, but it was delicious. It was so good. I'll, it had like it's, all of them had their own taste. I ooh, I keep thinking about it. I love potatoes. I do too. Usually when I get potatoes, I get like the red potatoes, and then I give them a little boil, and then you can either mash them if you're in a mashing mood, or you just kind of you know put like some parsley on them. Yeah. Or get uh, have have you ever done purple potatoes? Uh, I think I've had purple potato chips, but not actual purple potatoes. Yeah, purple potatoes, gray potatoes. They have brown ones. They have, there's all different types of weird potatoes. I'm sure somewhere at some place there's a, like, mixed potato that you can, that you, can you know, like one of those bags that have different styles of potatoes. Yeah. Yeah, oh Man. my God, I love a good potato. Then it says Pork. <laughs> Again, uh, <laughs> cook your meat. I feel like that should be that should be a standard. <laughs> uh, pork is no longer need. Wait, pork no longer needs to be cooked to well done, but you should still cook it past the medium point. Huh? I didn't know you could only you didn't have to cook it like to well done every time though. Uh, you don't have to, but it's one of those things that that pork at least, depending on how you cook it. The taste varies. At least that's oh, what yeah. I've just like. Like steak, it's about a texture thing, right? Like steak is still yeah. going to have that steak taste. But pork, yeah. depending on how you cook it, has like what to what degree you cook it has like a different, like an entire different experience. I don't know. I'm not a big like pork eater. So. Yeah, I'm not a big pork eater either. Pork eater. Pork eater. Pork eater. Pork eater. That's a fun thing to say. Pork eater. That's because it's kind of uh, porky. And everyone's used to what? saying porky as in porky pig. Porky dirt. Porky? Pork? I don't think it's because people are used to saying porky. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. I'm a fool. <laughs> I haven't heard someone say porky in me like forever up well, until that's you just said it. That's because no one needs to say it. It's always on our minds. <laughs> <laughs> no one needs to say it. It's always on the tip of our tongue. And then the... Last two are raw kidney beans. I don't know why you'd want to eat a raw kidney bean. Soak the beans in water for at least five hours before cooking. You'll be fine because you'll get nausea, vomiting, and upset stomach because of lectin and the uh, rhubarb. It's the final one. I don't know anyone who eats rhubarb unless it's with strawberries and a pie. Oh, yeah, no. I've never I, heard uh, of anyone just being <laughs> like, yo, I made something out of rhubarb. <laughs> never, not once. I'm eating my, my raw stick of rhubarb today. <laughs> I've never heard of it. Never. <laughs> yeah, I don't. I don't think I have either. So, like, most of these are literally just pretty common sense. Some are interesting. Like, oh, I didn't know about yuca and chaya, but like chicken. There yeah, was a rhubarb. There was a Mexican restaurant near me that was like. One of my favorite places in the world until recently when they started to like cut costs and shit. But mm. they used to have a, a uh, steak and fries kind of thing, except it was yuca fries. Oh my God, oh. it was so good. The yuca fries and like the steak with the chimichurri. Oh, delicious. Oh, that's the place we went to. Yeah, yeah. And I remember because I wanted to get that and they were out of it. Yep. They, they have never had it since that time. They literally <laughs> changed the menu since you were there. Heartbroken. Dang. Heart, it was my favorite thing on that menu. Gone. So you were like, this is so good. You got to get it. And I'm like, all right, give me that steak and uh, yuca fries. And they're like, we don't got any yuca fries. And I was like, what? Yeah. Yeah, they've never had it since. It sucks. Dang. Yeah, I wonder what, what the suck. what the deal with that was. Because it always what seemed like to sell well. I don't know. Uh, maybe they're just in high demand and the cost was too high for the yuca fries. I believe that. I believe that could have happened. Um yeah, it's a shame because I used to love going to that place. Now it's just too far to go for like a normal taco, right? Yeah. You can get tacos anywhere in this city. I would, <laughs> I would drive there to get that, but they don't have it anymore, so yeah. whatever. Well, it ain't that big a deal. That's who's going to bring up Tostino's pizza rolls, bleh, but those Amy's pizza rolls are good. The Amy's snack cheese pizza organic tomato and flour ones, and they cost like a dollar more, and they're great. I uh, don't know anything about that. I'll try them, but I will say that when I lived in New York, they had a like Michelinas or you know some. They were like a dollar, right? 
Uh, there yeah. were some off-brand version of pizza rolls, except they weren't pizza rolls. They were buffalo chicken rolls. Oh, my Whoa. God. Oh, my God. I used to buy those like crazy. <laughs> they can't have been made of anything natural. But holy crap, they were delicious. Delicious. Buffalo chicken rolls. Yeah. Like Ro Wave. Uh There's Tostino's Buffalo Chicken Rolls. Uh Coyote Buffalo Chicken Rolls. Those actually look pretty good. They were uh oh these ones. They were the Lean Gourmet Buffalo Style Chicken Snackers. Lean Gourmet. The Michelinas Lean Gourmet Buffalo Style Chicken Snackers. Uh they were so good. <laughs> they were so good. And the problem huh. is, is I cannot find them anywhere in L.A. <laughs> but I used to get them all the time in New York, and I'd be like, damn, they sold them for a dollar. I just want to point out, <laughs> this damn thing's got five, they have five stars, 58 ratings. These things oh are my God. so good. <laughs> I don't know why. It's upsetting, <laughs> but I'll never see them again. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to scout out my grocery stores for these buffalo chicken snackers. Yeah, dude, they're delicious. And they shouldn't be as good as they are. And they are. They're just so good. And I'm, like, I'm always <laughs> upset that I, it's been 10 years since I've had them. I'm going solely on my memory of what they tasted like. <laughs> Loved them. <laughs> Love these days. Maybe more than 10 years. <laughs> Maybe like 12, 13 years at this point. Still loved them. Damn. Yeah, I want to find it. I've seen like other Michelina stuff. Oh, shit. There's a little thing on Mama Michelina. <laughs> Uh -huh. When she immigrated to America. Hold on. No, 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 no. That is not Italian enough. <clears throat> Krenor, please. When she immigrated to America <laughs> from Italy, Mama Michelina brought with her a wealth of family recipes and a ma passion for cooking. You can taste it in the quality of our ingredients and authenticity of our flavors and see it strong in our commitment to value. I love that Mama Michelina... Learned about buffalo style chicken snackers overseas and brought it from Italy to America. Without her, where would we be? <laughs> and now she uh, she distributes them from Duluth, Minnesota, <laughs> <laughs> the most Italian of places. Uh, Mamma Michelina. Here's the thing: if anyone knows anyone at Michelinas who wants to send us a bunch of buffalo chicken snackers, oh my holy God. crap! I'd be so thankful. <laughs> I'm like, Michelina, send us the chicken snackers. Hell yeah. Oh, that sounds amazing. <laughs> it's gonna, a mamma Michelina. I'm going to see if I can find those next time I'm at the grocery store. Man. How did we get here? A <laughs> great question. Uh <laughs> I'm already I'm already going to Amazon to see if they have Michelinas. <laughs> Michelinas Buffalo Snackers. Here's the thing. They do not, but they do have a bunch of shoes called buffalo london kids sneakers so i mean that's a thing <laughs> they also have a lot of i searched buffalo style chicken snackers just dog treats <laughs> <laughs> have i been nice. eating dog treats this whole time it's quite possible honestly if they're only a dollar <laughs> i mean they were really good though <laughs> in fact some of these are probably more costly than the <laughs> buffalo style chicken snackers <laughs> dogs eating better than you are well that sounds about right well <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of good deals, well, that's the transition. Hey. <laughs> Hawthorne is out there ready for you to take the dive and decide that for the rest of 2020, you're going to smell your best. You're not going to be still wearing blue polo or polo blue. You know that damn thing? That's terrible. Uh, or whatever you got conned into buying at Sephora. Or the same cologne your dad got you when you were like eight for a, an event of some sort. <laughs> you are going to find your own scent through the power of Hawthorne. Hawthorne is this amazing website that you can go to and take a quiz. And the quiz will sort of like guide you through the process of determining what scents are right for you. And at the end, you will have a work scent and a play scent. And the work sense like, hey, I'm all about business, 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 business. And the play sense like, hey, baby. And because for obvious reasons, I use my play sense <laughs> way too much. Right. I had a new scent sent to me that is in the same sort of scope as what I got before, but it's more of a summery scent. And I guess it's supposed to be like green and airy is kind of the, the vibe. And um, 
from what I was told, because you know me, I don't know what the hell's actually in it, but uh, I guess it's like a, supposed to be like a crisp evergreen with a deep, creamy Australian sandalwood. Ooh. Sounds amazing, but, uh, you know, I don't know what any of that means. I just know it smells good. <laughs> and uh, it reminds me of the scent I had before, but doesn't smell exactly like it. And I love the idea of notes hinting at what you used to wear, but it being different, right? Because it's like, look, I got to change stuff up. It's it's a new, it's the last, second half of 2020. We got to go crazy. I love it. I love stuff like that. So what you can do is you right now, if you want to get in on this, you want to try it out for yourself and experience it, you can go to hawthorne.co, take the quiz. It's two minutes long. It'll tell you what two colognes are best for you. It'll tell you about their other products like deodorant, shampoo, body wash, face cleanser, lotions, things like that. I have a Hawthorne lotion. I'm still using that every day. I feel like I need to lotion up because if I'm going to be inside a bunch, my skin's got to be nice, y'all. Got to be nice. <laughs> oh, yeah. I still use my uh, my shampoo. I love that shampoo. I ran out. <laughs> I ran out of that shampoo so quick. Yeah, the scents are amazing. They're they're very well done. Uh, they're very well crafted. It's totally risk free, free shipping, free returns. Try it out. They send you a nice little package with all your stuff separated for you, so you can kind of like open it. Oh, I love this, and oh, I love it's. I love it. I think it's great. Uh, <laughs> check out Hawthorne at Hawthorne.co. That's Hawthorne with an E, H A W T H O R N E dot C O. Use code COX10 to get 10% off your purchase, Hawthorne.co. COX10 to get 10% off your purchase. All right, Crendor, let's go jump over some of the scouts. Crendor, how's that traffic out there? Traffic is insane right now. People are backing the entire grocery store up to get these Buffalo-style chicken snackers. They are fighting in the streets. There is Mama Michelina herself. She is out there throwing tomatoes. There is... <laughs> oh my god, she wants to get those chicken snackers. But you know what? She knows the secret recipe. And I that's one thing you. that she's never going to let up. Never. Uh, <laughs> never. Never. I'll tell you that much. Uh, Mama M M Michalina, please uh, sponsor us. Uh, back to you. All right. Maybe I will. <laughs> also, I guess we should go talk about the weather. That is the type of weather transition I'm here for. Uh, <laughs> so, we got... It's getting hot in here. It's getting hot all over. Uh, all I see is I went to weather.com, as I do. Lightning kills 250 people in 45 days. What the hell? See, the thing is, I don't know if that's a lot or not a lot. They state it, and you're like, wow, that seems like a lot. But maybe last year it killed like 300 people in 45 days. We don't know. Well, we, we could know, but I'm not researching it. Uh, what am I? Oh, yeah, weather. Uh, let's see. Let's go to Lightning. Lightning Ridge. Oh, actually, I'm not surprised you found that. I was about to say, like, is there a lightning? But, yeah, of course there is. Lightning Ridge, New South Wales, Australia. Yo, of course it's in Australia. Okay. <laughs> Uh, 48 degrees. Wow, yeah. it's only 48 degrees. Because it's, it's, uh, it's winter there. Or... Yeah. 5% uh, chance of rain through 10 a.m. You got sunny. Uh, then you got Tuesday, 66 degrees, mostly sunny. Wednesday, 71 degrees. Uh, Thursday, 68 degrees. Friday, 67 degrees with some showers. Watch out. Uh, Saturday, a.m. shower, 68 degrees. Sunday, 64. Monday, 61. Tuesday, 63, mostly sunny. Wednesday, uh, Thursday, 67, 68, mostly sunny. So it's pretty much like a 68 degrees average, which honestly, that's a pretty solid cold season. That's like a more of a... Yeah, it's like a temperate season. Yeah, it's not bad. Uh, I feel like we talked about that a few episodes ago. We are like, wow, and now I'm still shocked by it coming back to it. We did. I forgot to mention. All right, IKEA. <laughs> I still can't has believe this it. Bear, and he's called the Dungle Scott. Why are they selling a bear? Look, no, they sell like stuffed animals and stuff. Look at this guy. Oh, it's a <laughs> it's a stuffed animal. <laughs> yes. Okay. <laughs> oh my god. He this looks bear amazing. And he's I sold out now, life. like everywhere. Look at this. Cutie. Everybody's buying the Dungle Scott. 
Uh, I'm looking at him right now. Yes. I'm He's looking insane. at Jingle Skog, right. add Wait. to bag, okay. $35. Can you buy him online now? Yeah, I'm on Ikea right now. I'm looking at 35 bucks. Oh, my God. All right, hold on. Pause. <laughs> Are you buying it right now? Of course I am. <laughs> so I need the Amazing. new Google Skog. Uh, <laughs> right, Should I uh, buy a Google Skog too? Yes. Why wouldn't you? Am I, I, what am I gonna do with a Google Skog? What do you mean? It's a giant. It's a giant stuffed bear. What am I gonna do with that? I have no room in my life for a giant. Maybe I do. Maybe it's what I need <laughs> most. Maybe it's what I need most. I have a lot of alone time at home. Maybe I need a big stuffed bear. That's what I'm saying. You need a Dungle Skog. <laughs> a Dungle Dungle Skog. Um, all I'm saying is, this guy, this guy's great. And if you don't have one, you gotta get one. All but I'm only, saying is, this guy's great. Only after I purchase one. <laughs> uh, <laughs> right, I wouldn't I wouldn't take it from you. Thank you. Wait, what the shit? Oh, it's only I'm at the IKEA Australia. Oh yeah, I'm at IKEA Australia. <laughs> well that I went to go see like oh I wonder if I could actually buy this and I realized it's IKEA Australia is where I am. What? That's why, yeah, it was like, enter your postal code, and there's like four numbers. I'm like, what the shit is this? Dungle Skog. Wait, is he just not even available? Yeah, he's not even available. There's a, wait, there's a panda Dungle Skog? Oh, that panda sucks. <laughs> yeah, that's not, that's not, he's not as cool. He's like the the younger sibling that's like, I'm just cool, right? And the parents like, <laughs> no, you're not yeah, you could have the hand-me-downs. Yeah, I uh, yeah, I guess in America we love ourselves big brown bear. Australia, not so much. Sorry, Crandor. <laughs> Man, I just wanted my <laughs> Dungle Skog, and now they just got panda Dungle Skog, which I'm sorry, I got your hopes up. I thought I found it immediately. I was like, oh, there it is. Man, here's the thing, <laughs> I still <laughs> might buy the panda Dungle Skog because I I feel like I gotta get something <laughs> out of the Dungle Skog line. That panda is not even half the size of that other Dungle Skog. Wait, is he? How big is it? Look at him. Is. No, little kid has him on his back. There's a Dungle Skog monkey. Ah, uh, but is it as is it as oh, fluffy yeah, as that bear? I don't think so. Plus, yeah, that it's on the back of that kid too. So like it's definitely not a huge Dungle Skog. <laughs> <laughs> Those are like 14 bucks, the other one's 35. I feel like 35 yeah. is because you're paying for the extra size. Yeah, you're paying for that bigger bear. No, nah, yeah, that's gonna remove from bag. All right. <laughs> from your Australian <laughs> bag. <laughs> Removed from my Australian purchases. No, this one, this one's on the American one. The Australian one have the Dungle Skog. Heartbreaking. Australia, you're letting everyone down. You have so much. Australia has so much Dungle Skog. Yeah. They should share with the rest of the world. <laughs> Crendor yeah. is over here wishing he had a Dungle Skog. Just share. <laughs> Australia, uh. we just did you a service <laughs> with our weather report. And you're over here like, we're holding holding all the Gingles cogs. Yeah, come on. Let's some free. And that's the weather. All right. Let's go to sports. Sports. Uh, sports are kind of happening. There's golf <laughs> uh, and other and baseball, hockey, basketball. They're all uh, still progressing towards playing in like three weeks. Some people are opting out of playing, but... Uh, we'll see what happens. And Cam Newton went to the Patriots. So they got to, I guess Cam Newton's going to be the quarterback of the Patriots. Here's the thing. You know Bill Belichick's going to like turn him into his Darth Vader or something. <laughs> he will. I mean, let's, let's, let's not pretend. <laughs> yeah. By the end of the season, he's going to have that like weird Vader head scar. <laughs> and he's like, why is his uniform all black? It doesn't make any sense. Oh my god, yeah. And He's then force choking people. Yeah. It's that'll happening. be the, the crazy like Super Bowl of like Darth Vader Cam Newton taking on like the old Darth Vader Tom Brady and it'll be like some crazy battle. I would then... hate that. I would hate <laughs> I would hate to watch Tom Brady just don't just retire. Don't do, don't be involved <laughs> in sports anymore. <laughs> I mean He's I mean just... I'm down for one year of like the crazy uh, you know <laughs> the craziness that, that would be. 
I uh, I am not. I am over <laughs> it. I'm I'm so over Tom Brady. I'm like Brady. I just don't care anymore. We get it. You're very good. Stop. <laughs> uh, and that's uh, that's pretty much sports. All right, Quentin. What is our big news story of the day? Big news story of the day. Yep. Someone sent us a tweet about an underwater restaurant being completed in Norway. Huh. And about four or five years ago, we covered a story. <gasps> yes, we did. <laughs> yeah, of the Florida man who's tried to cash a $368 billion check to start an underwater restaurant. Jeff Waters. So Waters wanted to build an Italian restaurant, and he said, it's always been my dream to own the best authentic Italian restaurant on earth. Uh, wait a second. Are we sure is this it the isn't Jeff this? Waters that did this? Um, that's what we're trying to figure out. I don't think it is. Someone beat him to the punch. <laughs> yeah, this seems like it is not in America. Yeah, but here's the thing. How do we know Jeff Waters wasn't just Mama Michelina trying to make the best authentic underwater Italian restaurant known to Maine? If there are uh, some of those snackers there, I'm in. <laughs> oh, yeah, Waters said, I'm 10% Italian. Cooking authentic Italian food is in my blood. <laughs> <laughs> he had planned to make an 80 million square foot uh, restaurant for 30 million eaters at once. But it's going to be yeah, totally Yeah, no, this underwater. is not that. I'm looking at this. This is not that. <laughs> <laughs> Plus, it's going to be totally underwater, so people could look at sharks while they ate, but the bank won't give them the money. Right. Right. That This is the guy who wrote the fraudulent check. Yeah. Yeah. And he's the for one. Like $65 million or whatever the hell he wrote. This is the one with Tito Watts. Yes. Yep. Yeah. Tito said the check was good, so blame, me not, so blame Tito, not me. That's what he said. So this Tito, you know what? Tito Watts probably took that money and gave it to this Norwegian restaurant. Here's the thing. This Norwegian restaurant looks incredible. Oh, yeah. It actually looks awesome. So, it looks uh, so wild. It is like in the middle of, if you look at the photo, it looks like it's in the middle of nowhere. Yeah. It just looks like a big ass like ship that like capsized kind of, but like a modern yeah. cool ship. <laughs> and then you walk down into it and then... There's an underground eatery. Yeah. In, and there's windows into the ocean. And, yeah, it's incredible. I guess they also do experiments there for uh, research. Yeah. It says the first, most largest research. Wait, first? The first, the largest, and the most research friendly. Under is the world's biggest underwater restaurant with a total seating capacity for 100 guests. It's the first of its kind in Europe and also functions as a research center for marine biology. The Snuhetta Design Dining Experience started operating just yesterday, but people are already adding it to their Norway destination list. Uh, in Norwegian, under means both below and wonder. Half sunken into the sea, the building's 111-foot-long monolithic form breaks the surface of the water, the rest on the seabed below. Taking it a step further, the structure is built to eventually fully integrate into its marine environment as the roughness of the concrete shell will function as an artificial reef welcoming limpets and kelp to inhabit it. That's crazy. Whoa! It already has a... So they've been closed 55 days since the outbreak, but they already have a Michelin star? What? What the shit? Yeah, they have a Michelin star. And they, wow, this is crazy. I'm on their Instagram right now. I will simply say it, it is fascinating that this exists. All the food, whoa! <laughs> they have underwater art sculptures out in the actual, like to look out the window. One whoa. of them is straight up just like the sculpture of a man. If I was eating dinner, <laughs> and I saw like a stone man out in the water, I would be mind blown. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah, this place is awesome. This place looks so... If we ever are in Norway, for whatever reason, yeah. this is a stop that we must go on. Oh, yeah. This also feels like the type of place where it's like you got to book this like two years in advance. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's in the Michelin Guide. What the what? Uh, and then they have a... It, it, the website is literally under.no. 
for people who want to see what it looks like, it is called under.no, and it is incredible. Man, that's what I want in my dining experiences. Yeah. Weird shit. Like, I want to, <laughs> if I'm going out to eat, I want to be like wild. I don't just want to go out and get a burger. I want to be like, I ate under the ocean, right? I want to yeah. do that stuff. Oh my God, that's so cool. Yeah, that's awesome. No, I love that. Yeah, that's like a bucket list thing. You're like, I got to eat it underwater before I die. I have questions. All right. What is the um, USD to NOK exchange rate? The Norwegian Kron. Uh, okay, so they're saying that it is for, oh, my God. Uh, their seasonal menu, they have something called an immersion menu. That's 2,225 knock krona, as you, and that is $237. Oh, shit. <laughs> Mamma mia. <laughs> Mamma mia, indeed. That is, I don't see any, uh, they have a seasonal, this is so, oh my God. Wow. So they have a seasonal menu. We've created one set menu for all guests. So literally when you show up, you get what you get. Damn. To accompany this, we offer a beverage pairing designed with the complex. Blah, blah, blah. Uh, alternatively, we can also provide non-alcoholic pairings. So they have pairings of wine and juice. I guess you're not getting a Coke there, that's for sure. <laughs> uh, they have an immersion menu. So essentially, you're just like getting what you get? Is that the plan? I guess so. I mean, listen, if I'm eating underwater, like, that's fine with me. They yeah, they probably know more about the, the seafood delicacies of what's around them. Yeah, it probably is just whatever seafood they caught that day. <laughs> like, yeah. I bet that's pretty much what it is. Wow, this is so neat. I love looking at this. Uh, at the tip of Norway. Hold on, hold on. It is located at Bailvinian 48, five, or 4521 Lindenes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go to Google. Google Maps. Whoa, whoa, it is. It's on the very southern tip of Norway. Wow, that is ridiculous. It's on the most southern tip. Oh, wow. And it is, I don't know, it's it's it, it's very close to the Kiwi Spangreed. <laughs> you know, the Kiwi Spangreed. Of course. And... Le Bistro Spangreed, I guess. Spang, Spang, Spangered? Spangered? Is that the. I guess that's a town. Spangered. Spangered. But it is straight up near a hotel, <laughs> which is probably great. But. Oh, and a Thai place. That's nice. But it looks like most <laughs> of the places around here are fishing based. I mean, it makes sense. Also, and then it's straight up. Can, is, uh, one day you go eat there, and then the next day when you're broke, you go get some Thai food. Oh my god, it's literally, the best part about this, if you look on the map on Google, it is directly in the ocean. <laughs> this restaurant, they're just like, no, it's definitely in the water. Wow, it is straight up at the southern tip. Oh, it's it's you could go to Oslo and then take a car down the coast. Oh. oh I wonder what that trip would be like. Wow. Wow. <laughs> Norway. Wow, Norway. Norway. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> I, every time I've been in Norway, which is only twice, but every time I've been in Norway, it's been great. Norway is beautiful. Huh. Yeah, I go back to Norway in a heartbeat. So I went from super underwater fine dining to Mama Michelina's $1 pizza rolls. Here's the thing. Both are good. Yes. Both are delicious. Yeah. different. It's different experiences. Yeah, one is cheap buffalo chicken <laughs> snackers, and one is eating underwater with nature. You know? Yeah. Both equivalent, I think. <laughs> uh, so, yeah. All right. Well, that's it for us. Thank you so much for tuning in. Crendor, hit them with the socials. We've got so many socials. There's... uh. Crendor, or wait, Co Cox and Crendor. That's what this show's called. Yeah. <laughs> There's youtube.com slash Cox and Crendor podcast. That's where all these podcasts are. If you cut off the podcast part, it's youtube.com slash Cox and Crendor. That's where all the animations are. You can also go to Spotify, SoundCloud, iTunes, just Cox and Crendor over there. 
Also, you can follow our main things. There's twitch.tv slash Jesse Cox, twitch.tv slash Crendor, youtube.com slash Jesse Cox, youtube.com slash Crendor, facebook.com slash Jesse Cox, facebook.com slash Crendor, twitter.com slash Jesse Cox, twitter.com slash Crendor, instagram.com slash Notorious Cox, instagram.com slash Crendor was taken. Woo! All right. Well, that's it for us. Thank you so much for listening or watching or however you're enjoying this podcast. We'll see you guys next time. And as always, to be continued.